It feels good. It's doesn't feel a lot different to any other A400. Very new on the market, just come out. It's basically a facelift of what is already a very popular model in the UK. So we're just gonna have a look at it, compare the differences to the previous model, and that's about it really. So, Retta A400 XL, gray ATS. Slightly facelifted version of um, the blue A400 which we've got here which when it first came out in sort of 2012-ish I think 11-12 everyone sort of went oh my god it's blue okay because it was the first semi-auto to be a bit a bit out there which a lot of people like you know they like something different they bought it uh, very popular with semi-auto shoots or people in particular that wanted to shoot things like the Beretta World who would normally shoot a Krieg off or a Pratsy over and under etc. So you know, buy an auto, we'll shoot the Beretta World and then we'll flog it next week. That has happened. The latest version is this. This is the grey ATS. The grey ATS, quite simply because the action's grey. The ATS is a new coating which Beretta have been using on the A400 Extreme and Extrema models, which are primarily used for wild fouling. So I believe it's something quite similar to Cerakote, very hard wearing, impervious to rust, etc., etc. Not sure why they need it on a clay gun, but hey ho. Um, one of the big differences you can see from the original blue is it's got XL on the side emblazoned on the left and the right hand side of the action. Okay, so just in case you forget what model you're shooting, you can just look at the side and it will tell you. Not entirely sure I like it. I think the whole gun as a whole is pretty smart. Uh, whether that needed to be there, don't know. But again, I suppose when you've got something that's already uh, uh, a really popular gun, you know, how, why and how do you change it? So in essence, it is the same as the previous model, which is the, the blue one. And they also have done an A400 Black Edition Sporter, which has got some of the bells and whistles on. Uh, the main difference being a carbon fiber rib. It wasn't all that popular because the reason people buy Bretta semi-autos is because they're quite heavy. So if you're shooting a, um, a again, a perhaps the Krieg off a DT11, something that's eight and a half pound plus, you want something that is as similar as possible. Yes, it's lighter because it's a single barrel. There's a lot less metal in the bloody thing. But at the same time, you want something that feels as close to what you've got for your competition clays as possible if you shoot in an auto shoot. XLs weigh in. They're under eight pound, but they're sort of like seven nine, seven ten, seven eleven, which is heavier than you'll find most Benelli's, Brownings, etc. Okay, so out of all the semi-autos that we sell, the A400, uh, in terms of the gas, well, the Beretta range of gas-operated autos is the best. They only make gas-operated autos. They don't do inertia like Benelli do. So we've talked about this, I think it's Aquatech Shield or something like that, that the grey is on the action. So matte finish barrel as was on the uh, A400 Black Edition Sporting. So the difference is with this one is it's got a conventional steel rib like the original blue auto. Traditionally, the A400 has always come with standard silver extended Optima HPs. New model features the uh, latest Beretta DLC, which I think is diamond liquid coating, perhaps, um, black chokes, which again, it, it, the coatings these days are all about making things last, making them impervious to rust. You know, there's a lot of Cerakote being used in the gun industry. There's a lot of um, this kind of ceramic-y type stuff as well. Look about all the chokes, they use ceramic on their chokes. And it's a bit crazy because what they're trying to do is make things last longer when really you want people to buy guns every two or three years, but hey-ho. Another slight difference between the original blue A400 is it's got the clanger nose. So this is the um, the latest style bolt handle. They did use it on the multi-tog and the black edition. Just something bigger so you can grab hold of it a bit easier. And they've now updated the bolt release as well. Because the original buttons on a lot of uh, older Brett semi-autos can be a bit fiddly. If you remember back to the 391, there was actually a, a fast bolt release thing that you sort of knock this pin out the side and so you could just slam your hand on it for, for, um, for fast loading. Despite the gun being a fairly low cost item, we're talking 15, 1600 pound, I think these guns are, um, they still look the part because they use this laser grain to make it, to enhance the, the, the look of the wood, 
but also it makes it quite good in, in all weathers. It's, you know, it, it essentially has a, probably a better seal of the grain than a, a conventional oil finish. Uh, available in 28 and 30 inch barrels in sporting specification with a 10 to 8 uh, tapered rib, which is what you'd expect to find on most Bretter's competition guns these days. Um, kick off and non kick off. The 800 ATS Grey has now got, it still comes with a kick off like the original A400 did, and a lot of A400 models still do, but the original kick off. Uh, was located at the rear of the stock. Now, yes, it works in terms of reducing recoil. There's not a great deal of recoil on these guns anyway because A, they're gas operated, and B, they're quite heavy. Um, but if you didn't like it, didn't like the feel of it, the sensation of it, and you took it off, you were left with a dramatically short stock that you had to do something with. So we've seen people bring them in here with spacers, bits of plastic, all sorts of bolted on the back, which quite frankly looks awful. So, the the advantages of the new kickoff behind the rear of the pistol grip is a it's got a conventional length stock so you can still make the stock longer shorter however you want to with them um, with the the micro recoil pad b is i think the sensation is different you know it's not bang it's not physically in your shoulder the recoil is being absorbed further up the stock and although i i have shot an a400 upland which is a lighter gun than this it does feel it is a different sensation when you pull the trigger it's not like uh, a, a like i said a recoil reducer you'd expect it to be where it's going backwards and forwards in your shoulder you can just feel it a little bit differently so i think that's a really good idea um does the kickoff the kickoff does work I'm not that bothered about it because if you look at this from a, a competition gun point of view, people could be shooting 21, 24, 28 gram loads. It will cycle 21s uh, if these are kept particularly clean and you use good quality cartridges usually. I could be sticking my um, foot in the mud there because the manufacturers probably say they won't cycle 21s. Usually with good quality gas semi-autos, 24 gram, 70 mils are fine. Some will cycle 21s, some won't, okay? But the whole point, I think, of the kickoff when Beretta first developed it was for big, heavy loads. It was for the extrema. It was for going fouling, um, you know, big heavy cartridges 36 gram plus right up to whatever you want to put in three three and a half inch magnums and yes when you're shooting cartridges of that kind they come into their own do you need it on a clay gun not really um the ats comes with three extended dlc chokes which comes in this nutty little box okay uh, as traditionally you would have got with the 400 anyway and these are i believe quarter half and three quarter you covered for most things uh, superior steel shot proofed as all bretters are these days so you can use steel in these up to half and again as with most bretter semi-autos you will get some form of shim i think there probably should be more than this but I, I will come on to the fact that i think they've skimped a little bit on this model in a second uh, so as a gun it's great you know really really smooth to shoot extremely reliable and it will appeal to a lot of people. Some people don't like the blue. They did a bronze field version, which some people didn't like. I think the gray is sleek. I think it's smart. I think it's modern, especially with the matte finish. And also with the A400 Sporters, although this is something we don't tend to get asked for very often, you can get different weighted barrel caps, which can alter the balance of the shotgun. To finish, sadly, this is the box that it comes in. Most, shotguns these days you will get a plastic carry case okay i don't think they cost a lot of money you know we're trying to save the environment so i'm not sure cardboard's a good idea it's my only gripe about the gun i think you know 15 1600 quid it should come in a plastic case it doesn't come in a plastic case granted quite often they end up in the loft and i understand that but i think from a presentation point of view from the biggest manufacturer in the world it should come in a case so next time you get your head together bretta put it in a plastic case. That for me is everything. Any questions you've got about um, the A400 XL Grey ATS or any other Bretter model, you know, we sell a lot of Bretter over and unders as well as semi-autos. Uh, drop us a, a message, comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one.
Cheers.